moving ahead to our last chapter, last but not the least, a quick recap and take home messages with Dr. Kamal Kishore sir. Over to you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Now, we are thankful to the participants who have covered their journey so far with us. So now, as we are on the brink of the finishing line, so let's try to have a quick recap of what we have learned, what we have covered so far. And then what are the take-home messages which you can take home? Because ultimately at the end of the day, once you have attended this course, what is your learning? And then what should be our attitude further for the learning? That's very, very important component. So what is that? As I said initially that the data is a very important and integral component of any analysis. So the first, our task is to become friendly with the data. And in order to become friendly means looking at the data. What is its health status? The health status, when we talk about the data health status, we look at, are there any error into the data? We do some data checks, such as, I have written here as a cosmetic and logical error. Cosmetic errors are some sort of the errors. Like I'm using, let us say I'm writing mail as M-A-L-E. Some of them might have entered the caps M-A-L-E. Some of those entry might have been small M-A-L-E. Some of them have been with the first word M as a caps and another A-L-E. For me, these are all same. But for other people, not for other people, but for software, since most of the software are case sensitive, so they will treat these cases separately. So these kind of the error and where the data is beyond a certain point, these are cosmetic error. We need to clean that first. What a logical error? A patient comes to you and tell his or her symptom of the disease. You do not simply believe what the patient say. You go for the confirmatory test. And then you ask the patients to get the test done, laboratory test done. Now, what is the logical error in this thing? So let us say the laboratory test report say negative or no as such the problem. Simple example. But somebody while entering the data wrote as the positive. Now it should have been negative, but it is positive, which is entered, right? So this is a logical error. Or male, when there is a gender status as a male and there is a pregnancy status, yes or no. In front of the gender, somebody by mistake, right? Pregnant, male cannot be pregnant, right? So these kind of the error are known as the logical error. And we do a couple of descriptive and differential statistics, such as finding mean, median mode, drawing normal distribution curve, running those normality tests. It's sort of becoming friendly with the data. Like, as we first time meet with our professional colleague or in a personal family matter, long-time friend, we try to ask and inquire about them. So initial checks are getting friendly with the data. And these are some of the steps. Once you become friendly with the data, then after that, the second step which you take is always with the fundamental to run any statistical analysis or these techniques, parallel techniques, is to validate the assumptions. We don't assume simply that, okay, fine. We keep on testing them, right? I may say that, yes, I may assume that I can run a marathon, but unless and until I am I test myself somewhere that I can run at a stretch maybe 20 to 30 kilometer. So that means I'm not validating my assumptions. So similarly is the case with the data. So there are various assumptions and we have, I have given here the, the testing and other thing which you people can see here, can plot the multiple at scatter plot correlation. Now, I'll not go into the residual too much into the detail because there are different type of the residual which can be used for the different type of uh, validating assumption. 
standardized residuals, studentized residual, predicted uh, residuals, and so on and so forth. But standardized and student and raw residuals are enough to validate the assumption. So just validate the assumption. That's a very important. Otherwise, the foundation is hollow and it can break any time. It's as simple as that. And we want the foundation to be strong, whether for our career, our houses, or our relationship. Otherwise, it may crumble down any time. Now, the next part is, once now we test those assumptions, now when the assumptions are met, all assumptions are met, let's say what to do. Most of the assumptions are met, but heteroskedasticity is not met. That's a data is not homogeneous, it is heterogeneous. Okay, then if non-normality is valid, other are met. If it is a correlated error, then what should we do? So we need to have the different, different set. When assumptions are met, be very clear that apply the regression equation. There is nothing much to do. You just simply go with the regression. It's okay. Done. Fine. Deal. Done. When the data is heteroskedastic, there are certain <clears throat> transformation which are recommended. But otherwise, one can go with a weighted least square regression. It's a form, the variation of a simple uh, linear regression and then bootstrap confidence interval can also be used. Okay, that's another step one can take. Non normality, for most, many of the statistical technique given the reasonably large sample size is a robust to the violation of a non normality, but still let to err on the side of the caution. We say that, okay, fine, we do not want to take any uh, uh, risk. So maybe you can go with the bootstrap confidence interval, which is nothing but the resampling of the same data and then finding a confidence interval. So very well established technique. Nowadays, you can find in most of the software, including S cases also. And then maybe you can transform the data also. Okay. There is a logarithmic transformation. There is a square root transformation. There is an inverse transformation. But remember, read first of all what kind of the transformation is required for what kind of the characteristics. I have not covered that into the detail, but just giving you a caveat here for the particular way of dealing with the data. It is not randomly we apply any transformation. And if the data is correlated, we assume the independence of the errors. But if the errors are correlated, then we don't have the reason to apply this regression. We apply the advanced regression techniques, which account for the correlation between the error while analyzing the data. Those are multi-level uh, modeling, okay? And the generalized estimating equation. Then there is latent growth curve modeling using structural equation. There are other techniques also, but when it's correlated error, you need to know that you cannot apply this simple regression technique. So that's what so far we have covered. I have tried to capture this in the one graph. So hopefully the message are clear to you. Now, so finally we have almost, I have tried to cover most of the things or the difficulty which residents keeps on asking me the question. I have tried to brought in all the knowledge but I may have not covered many of your points. So my apologies in advance for you. <clears throat> Maybe you may write to me. I'll be sharing my contact detail into the end. You can tell me that how to modify this session further or what may be further if you want to look into this regression. What sort of the questions or answers you need further. So departing note number one, assumption. Don't simply assume the data. Test the contours of your data because everything depends upon the data. As they say, data is the new oil. Just refine the oil first of all and then use it. And you can do wonders with the oil, right? So just don't assume. Just test assumption. Regression, as, as I pointed out, regression is a ticking time bomb of the Statistics person. It's a very powerful tool. 
it does have a limitation and does have an advantage. Use it carefully, not casually. Look into all the important things, what is going to happen. Limitations is the very important or a fundamental hallmark of humanity. Everybody is standing on the shoulders of the giant or of the previous generations. So they knew about their limitation, they worked on them, so they gave us a better platform, better future. So we should also know our limitation, the tool which we are using the limitation. We are also evolving rapidly and the tools are also evolving rapidly, right? So <clears throat> know the limitation, but know the limitation. Every generation faces a different kind of the challenges and different kind of the limitation. Just try to follow them and <clears throat> to avoid the mistake. My final take home message to you is, as you might have started your journey with grit and determination in the beginning, we always, almost always are very enthusiastic in the beginning. But yes, then ultimately our consciousness or willpower or maybe the teaching faculties attitude or the way of teach comes in between. So then all of us need some intrinsic or extrinsic motivation. So then we buck ourselves. So, and I'm happy so far you have bucked yourself up till this time. And now as you're almost ready to cross the finishing line, your journey is going to end. But never worry, there is always an uphill climb to task till we die. It's as simple as that. Once you will learn these fundamentals, there will be other challenges which will be keep on coming. And then ultimately, again, there will be an uphill task for you to climb. But don't worry. This is the best era in which we are living. So please keep on learning, keep on caring, keep on sharing. And I'm thankful to IAPSM Academy eConnect for giving me the opportunity to record this session with us. Uh, I, along with Priya, madam, struggled with the technology. Like all of us struggle many a time. We keep on talking about the big thing. But ultimately, these are small, small issues which creates a problem. We tried our best to record these sessions to the best of our capability. But if you find any difficulty or if you come across a good platform to record these sessions or maybe facilitate these kind of things, we'll be happy to know. And that is why I'm sharing my detail. You can write back to me, ask for the clarification of the question, and so on and so forth. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir.